It's uh, good to see you, man. I'm 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 digging yeah. the uh, the nice, cool 105 degree weather. You liking that? <sighs> you know, it beats freezing. I know. I'll oh no. Much, no. <laughs> I will. I'm sorry. People say you can, you know, put on more layers, but who's comfortable wearing all that? Right, I mean, I'm that's not. true. Uh, I have t-shirt and shorts all day long, man. I think of, I, I remember one time somebody was like, Hey, you know, what's your vision of, uh, if you Hades, the afterworld, I'm like mowing the yard in Kansas in August in a sweater. <laughs> that's my vision of what it's going to be like. No, but no, man. In a sweater. Um, yes. But I, I love my lawn mowing time. So I'm not going to knock that a bit, <laughs> man. I love it, man. I know that you got to, you guys, uh, you guys got, uh, the all-star game this week, right? Friday or Saturday. We do. Right? We do. Yep. We're going up Saturday. Yeah. You doing that that's too? That's so cool. Uh, no, man, I'm actually hanging back. Got some stuff here, some interviews and things, gotcha. uh, Tatum will be there, but I'm not. Speaking gotcha. of all stars, speaking of all stars, man, someone I've been following for uh, still a young buck, which is amazing, uh, a top of his game, young buck, but someone I've been following for a very long time. There's a there's those generational, and then there's those multi generational musicians that come along, Jesse. Yeah, and there's a band that everyone's heard of that uh, Skillet. Um, there's a great guitarist that founded that band uh, with John. Uh, his name is Ken Stortz, uh, has been doing a lot of things outside of, of that, has his own music college helping mold some young minds and the next generation of rock stars. And I like to call him Dr. Rock because I like to call him. I just, I just made that up for him. So I don't want to waste any more time and bring on this uh, OG rocker and current just music mastermind, uh, Ken himself. Ken, how you doing, man? Hey, doing great, man. Thanks a lot. Good to be here. But, yeah, man, we're glad to have you. I know you're a busy, man, with the you. college and all things you're doing. So we've got some questions over the years that are, we wanted to run past you. My first question, Cam, when I look at, you know, even before the college and then your many, many great years of playing, even before Skillet taking me back, when did you first pick up a guitar, man, in your life and start playing? <clears throat> I, uh, I discovered I was a trumpet player in band. I discovered guitar at 16 and threw everything away and just like, OK, guitar is it. Changed the course of my life. 16, I, huh? Yeah, I actually snuck into my drummer friend's bedroom late at night, and he had a guitar for sale, 40 bucks, a guitar, amp, pick, cord, strap, like, here's everything, $40, and I, and I, that was the beginning. I just, Man. I $40. 40 bucks, Jesse, is, didn't you spend 40 bucks on your coffee, Jesse? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably did. <laughs> Uh, I had a guitar once when I was a kid. Man, I, I'd spent way over forty bucks. I know that. Much. Was it that Casio guitar, Jesse, that you always <laughs> rock? Oh no, no, no! no. It, was, it was an electric guitar. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm curious, man. Uh, my, I remember I, I was asked this question to guitarist. My first actual guitar. I started playing. When I was twelve. I had an Ibanez Roadstar. It was purple. It was legit. What kind of guitar was it, man? Like that one. But what was your first? real guitar like that's you know your baby what was the first one you got yeah. you know yeah i still have it it's it was a 82 fender strat uh Ooh. with a rosewood fingerboard and uh just like hendrix right hand and everything just real nice Saved all my pizza delivery money for that thing and i still have it to this day i love that thing that's a lot of dominoes right there man for sure <laughs> that's right so, that go right. ahead jesse with go ahead with two jesse <laughs> yeah so uh so obviously you know picking up guitar at 16 but what really got you into music i mean you mentioned playing trumpet before but why'd you choose to go down that career path with music uh you know i've asked myself that a lot because i was kind of a smart kid in school and was going to be doing computers or engineering or something and i just uh maybe i thought the girls were down the music <laughs> path I, I didn't grow up <laughs> a christian and you know, i was just writing music and i, I guess you know I, I did you know even as a 12 year old i was like riding my bike writing songs in my head like singing and making up songs so i found out kind of later i'm really more songwriter than guitar player you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah just love expressing uh everything in the in the through music so oh yeah it's a language man gotcha. in and of itself so i like that jesse uh you know i'm curious man you've done obviously continue to do a lot of things on your journey man um I know it's probably hard to say this, but maybe uh, one or two thinking about favorite gig memories, man, throughout your career. Um, I've had artists say from Red Rocks to some of say like there's uh, the Troubadour, different places. Is there a gig so far that you remember playing that's just been like, that's the go to so far in your journey? You know? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the skillet. Um, probably 97, 98. Um Maybe it was 97 at Sunshine Festival in the uh, yeah. middle of a field in Minnesota, summer festival. Just the height of, we were just becoming known and the shows were 100% on fire, like heavy music, crazy crowd, Holy Spirit. I, yeah. I, 
I really felt like, you know, I could throw this guitar down at this moment and it will keep playing. Like the, yeah. the angels are on stage, people just going bananas. I love it, man. Yeah. I mean, it was three or 4,000 people. It wasn't like the biggest show or anything, but it was like that that moment just defines what rock and roll is about, especially as a Christian, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Sure. I remember, yeah, Jesse, we were talking about this, me and Jesse. We had a, a guy from Islander. You may know Mikey from Islander. You might not know Ken. It's a, kind of a band similar to POD. They're, they're coming up, kind of a positive Christian kind of thing. And he okay. said he had a concert one time with 20 people, and it was like that was the concert of his life. We put him on stage. So I get where you're coming from, man. Just yeah. doesn't matter the crowd size. It's how did it impact you. I love that, man. That, that's okay. awesome. So, yeah. Um, so Jesse, we're kind of tag teaming that other question. When you look at, I can't, I remember, I'll never forget when I was growing up, um, late nineties as well, we had a station in Wichita, Kansas called Z91. The first time I heard lock in a cage, I'm like, this is some, this is some like awesome nine inch nails type stuff when I'm a kid. Right. So I heard, I'm like, here, come on. You know, you guys are working on it. And the influence it had on me, we tried to write some stuff like you guys using pro tools. It was terrible. <laughs> at that oh, time, yeah. 13. But the influence you've had on me, right. What you guys have done you, you as a musician, I'm curious to see over the course of your career, who's been maybe one or two of your biggest influences, you know? Man, I've just been recently breaking it out again. King's X is hands down the biggest influence, really. I mean, I, I love the Beatles and ELO and stuff that's like early Queen, stuff that's from the 70s, <laughs> you know, classically influenced rock. But King's X is got, has got to be it, just for heavy guitar tone and thematic everything. M Muse, Muse is more in my recent band, you know, in the 2000s, but overall that's that's where john and i kind of came together at king's x he was he was more pop and i was more metal you know uh coming in but uh they're they're yeah, the I love it, man love yeah them. i love it man and I, I can see i think that's it's definitely you can see some of those influences and as as the style of transition and it's neat because think man the internet's great i gotta watch a lot of your tutorials and i still hear shreds but also at that almost like yard birds that eclectic thing about you you have this blend where you can do all of it and that's that's a real skill set man so uh, again i could fanboy out for days about watching you play i'll leave that jesse if you want to go with four jesse go ahead man <laughs> yeah yeah so so going forward you've got the college again and uh these degree programs you're putting through for people uh, for you what's next what's coming for you next in 2023 I mean, as we get into the second half of the year Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the, the college is doing well, just super stable, super uh, excited. Uh, the staff and the students are doing so well uh, right now. It's it's a great point for me to sort of hand some things over to my leaders that are, the you know, sort of running things at the school. I, I'm going to be in England next week with a school. We're trying to start there for it's like a one year school and uh, talking again with our Germany campus. I, I, I'm really into the global stuff, uh, just getting things going. Um, the, I don't know if you guys know the uh, the objective and the the extreme tour yep. folks and all that. So we're going to meet over there in England as well, and then India later this year. And trying to see how this music education and heavy or or brand new music, whatever style genres bending stuff we we see on tour, uh, see how that can just come in and affect the kingdom. I, I I'm, I'm yeah. looking for more time away from the school, kind of in and out and and speaking and and uh, playing a little bit as well. I love awesome. that. Jesse, I know you talked about uh, the influences you've had on Jesse and I both. I mean, it's nice to have, I remember we were talking to um, an artist, Pettity, we we're talking about when you make music and you don't have to change who you are to be great, right? There's There used to be, you know, this 90s music, there was, there was a couple bands and it was like before you kind of hit the scene, early, two, early 90s, it was like, okay, DC Talk, Newsboys, wasn't a lot of like rock, audio journal, and then you guys hit the scene and you open up those floodgates, you guys, POD, 12 Stones, I mean, I mean, just even to an extent, Creed, like you open the door for some of these bands that have a message that's heavy and it's like, it's good music, right? So uh, are you getting, you're doing some more tours, maybe uh, some side projects or gigging think, and stuff? Well, you know, since Skillet, I've, I've kept a three-piece band that called yeah. Beat together. And, and and that's, I think we're about to put out sort of some vinyl stuff. Like this was the, the last decade. Here's, here's some, here's some real music, get our Spotify all caught up to modern days and all that. And uh, I hope to do, I'm doing more of solo stuff that's yeah heavy, but solo is weird, you know? Uh, so it's, it's interesting. I, I'm, I've, I've done some shows where it's just me and a guitar and uh, I'll, I'll do original stuff. That's just mm -hmm. punk. one guy on stage doing something punk rock sound. It's, it's just a little different. Maybe it's, 
don't know, Jack White type sound, maybe yeah, or something, yeah. something that's just a little odd. And yeah. Uh, so working working on that, and uh, you know, we may put a band together. I, I we I've talked with one of the guys from All Star United you know, that maybe meet up and play. The guitar player from uh, Dave Clo, and just we talked about doing a band together. But I, I'm that's not sure, cool. I'm not sure the touring is in the future. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I've I followed your three piece. I love it, man. I was I was I was hoping you'd say some more vinyl because I can't wait, man. Let me know so I can order it and put the merch on the wall. I can't wait, man. So. Um, <laughs> There's a segment, man, that we transitioned to. I know with interviews you've done and things, and you're used to speaking so eloquently and so just laying it out. But there's a segment that we do every episode. Our fans send us some amazing questions. So we keep it PG, but our fans give us the deepest, weirdest parts of the internet. It's awesome. And they come up with stuff, okay? So I'm going to run some stuff by you. Jesse and I bet on these. Jesse, you got your picks for these? I do. I do. Yep. So what we do can just explain the winner gets lunch paid for by the loser. It's five questions. Okay. Now these things, um, you have to pick one, even as obscure as it may sound, or just what was that? You got to pick one answer. So I'm going to go first. So for the next, uh, imagine time doesn't exist. It could be past or present. You don't have to worry about live or dead. Anything's possible. So for the next summit, well, let's say a, a speaking conference that you're going to, uh, for the entire day, you have to walk around and you cannot say your real name. You have to walk around and tell someone that you're either A, Kevin Sorbo, or B, David Caradon. I am Dr. Kevin or Dr. Kevin. How you doing? You gotta, you gotta sell it. You gotta no smile. You can't crack a smile. You just gotta do it. Are you gonna say that you're Kevin or David? Who you going with? I'm, I'm gonna go, go David. <laughs> I knew it. I had it. Did you have that one? Jesse, I yep, had that one. I did. I did. Good. One for one. Okay. Got you. So a lot of times artists, you know, there's times across uh, genre bender, like you said, and sometimes even you'll see artists fill in for others, even some, sometimes frontmen. I know you've done a lot with singing and, and, and guitar, but you're asked out of the blue one day to fill in for one of these two bands. You're going to do all their whole set. You're the lead singer for the night. Okay. The two bands you get to choose from, and I think I know this one, you can either A, fill in for Bono, a few two, or B, fill in for Tom from Radiohead. Which one are you going with? I'm going to go Bono on that. Ah, I did not have that one, man. I had Radiohead, dude. I did. Because you guys were like, you were sitting down one day. I, I watched a lot of your interviews. And you guys talked about being influenced by OK Computer. So I'm like, ah, I had you for Radiohead, man. So, all right. Yeah. That's cool. Guess yeah, what you I, I normally am for the weird uh, music, but, uh, but I think I got more room to uh, room to be myself on, in you too. I don't know. I, don't know. We'll I got see. you. OK. I, I Jesse, had to go have Bono on with that one. I, I went Bono. Okay, so you're beating me, so you're actually ahead of me, Jesse. So I gotta gotta catch back up here. So next one, let's imagine. Okay, so we you, one day, far in the future, that you get to heaven, uh, which that's the goal for all of us, and you get to pick a heaven intro song as you're walking into the gates. Right, you're walking through, and you have two songs you get to choose from as the gates open and you're going in. Option A, walk into heaven, playing "Welcome to the Jungle." Okay. Or B, walking in with "Don't Stop Believing" by Journey as you walk through the gates. Which one are you going with? <laughs> that's that's tough i'm gonna i'm gonna have to go journey but it's a little cheesy but i'm gonna go with that because that's like that's just too, yeah. that's too, good. That's too good you can just see the like open it up and you're just kind of stand there you know it just opens up and you're walking yeah, in i, I might, love it, I might I be love macking it. a little bit goofing around <laughs> yeah. i love it jesse what you have on that one that's what i had man i went journey last one man so last question so again kind of on the teaching thing we're putting down the guitar for a minute stepping away from that you're asked to do a parallel uh we have to fill in and basically teach an entire uh semester of these two things first option is algebra but you cannot speak all you can do is write everything down you cannot speak anything the entire class algebra no speaking or b you have to teach a dance class but the entire time you do the dance class you have to wear cleats so you're going with algebra with no speaking or dancing with cleats which one are you going with uh, i'm gonna go algebra that oh man <laughs> i've uh, what'd you have on that one jesse i had dancing in cleats okay so we tied we ended up tying so we'll, we'll call it a wash all right there you, go, there you so go you saved me ken so ken hopefully in, in interviews past you haven't had a little segment like that so we appreciate you man that's being hilarious. a good sport yeah. love i love it. it love it so the last segment i'm gonna give it back to jesse man for that final segment so yes so this last one we just kind of call it the open mic ken um what would you, you know, share your thoughts to, let's say, younger musicians or anybody wanting to get into the music business, you know, on chasing their dreams? I mean, tell them what your advice would be to that and, and you know, any philosophies you want to throw into yeah. that conversation. Well, I guess I have to go to uh, find a community that is supportive and uh, faithful, orthodox 
Christian community to be in because yeah. that's that's the place where we started out of in, in Skillet and and I you know built that around the school and it's the one thing that you can you know it teaches being in community accountable with people around you is the, is the one thing that teaches you to mature in your speaking and your belief and your faith everything mm -hmm. um, all you know all the other stuff there's talent everywhere but um, somebody to be formed into a more mature person and more mature Christian uh, you got to have Bonhoeffer and community you know commit, committed Christian community man I love that. It's it's a lot of like maybe finding your niche, maybe finding that spot that someone that could support you. I, I like that. I like what you're saying with that. There's a there's a w one thing we stand for, and we like it that um, all you know all ideas and mindsets. We welcome everyone here, but we also love when someone is able to um, they know what they are, they know what they stand for, and I respect that about you from day one. You and and, and John both. Um, I don't care what. Again, I, I respect where you come from, whatever your philosophy is, your creator, whatever. I love it that you know where you stand and you don't back down from that, and you still just make some awesome music, right? I, I went back to this with all the interviews I've, I've done and people I've watched, I've, I've done one with Red, we work with one of the guys from even Seether and the message is, hey, I can be great and not change what I think. I don't have to change to anybody else. And I love that about you, Ken, is you know where you stand and what you believe and I respect you for that, you know? So oh, yeah. thank you, man. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I love the I love the find a community aspect. That's that's deep. That's uh, yeah, yeah, find, find it. Hopefully yeah. it's in the local church, you know, hopefully you find a healthy local church, you know, but yeah, uh, somebody's out there. You know. I, yeah. I love that, man. I know, again, you're always busy and that, that philosophy of just, uh, I, I can't say it enough, just standing for who you are and people I, in today's world. I think, I think being genuine and being yourself is even more successful than ever. You know what I'm saying? There's a niche for everything, right? So, yeah, yeah. So, man, I, I love I, I love getting to track you down. Like I said, being a great guitarist, a great teacher, a philosopher. Um, uh, again, just still rocking, doing great after all these years. It was a bucket list item for me, Ken. Like I said, we've done a lot of interviews, man. A lot of people, but I've wanted from day one. Ever since I first heard you guys jamming in the '90s at my uncle's Volkswagen, dude. I'm like, I gotta get these guys on. Uh, you <laughs> being the OG, I, I love the with the writing. That was my final question. I know with the first couple albums, writing and all that. Um, Taking a moment aside from the playing days and playing, are you still ghostwriting and doing things like that as well for musicians? Some of your up and comers, you doing that? You know, I'm, I'm mostly teaching. I'm mostly teaching them, and they're doing their own stuff. And I basically just uh, coach folks into uh, the their careers and those kind of things. And we'll have a wonderful couple came out of Visible called Carolina Story, and uh, okay. helped get their first song. They're they're way past me now. They're doing country folk stuff. It's amazing. But uh, I, I mostly write uh, stuff around the school, you know, thematic stuff, Christmas stuff, things that are just free and fun to do and um, encourage people. I, I do a lot of first time people have ever, they've never written, you know, therapeutic, creative writing, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I just love watching people spark out the first time. I love it, man. Well, man, thank you for, again, uh, we always say the next generation of musicians is in, and athletes are in good hands. Jesse and I say that a lot. Thank yeah. you for continuing to help make music great, man, because music does matter. There's times, uh, one more story for you. Uh, you know Disciple, I'm sure, very well, yeah. right? So Joey from Disciple, uh, we shared the story a lot. He said we were a guy was sitting in his room one day contemplating in his life, had one bullet in his gun, heard um, a song by Disciple, hit him took the bullet out of the gun, went to the concert, made a necklace, gave Joey the necklace of the bullet, says, hey, take this. You helped save me. I don't need this. And he found it at church and, and found his path, right? So um, that's what you're talking about. Music is important, oh, you know? Yeah. So Yeah, shout yeah. out to Naomi from Minnesota that said that around the song Saturn from many years ago. Man, it's such a great song too, man. From day one, I the first time I got that from you guys, a little sampler disc, remember that back in the day? Oh, yeah. disc? Man. <laughs> But anyway, I can I could I could you'd have to stop me again. I'll talk your ear off. So I want to thank you for your time. Please let it be known it's the first of many. We'll be watching everything you do and celebrating and, and being there in your corner, man. So congrats on the continued success. And we can't wait to catch up and do it again soon. Okay. So thanks, man. I appreciate it so much. No worries, man. You take care. We'll get you back your day and you have a have a great, great day. Okay. Appreciate you, man. See us. Thanks. Thank you. So Jesse, I'm telling you, man, I, I OG, man, what do you think of him? Great guy, huh? Oh, yeah, just down to earth. I mean, really uh, bought into his message, and uh, and and it's just great to to hear from people like that. He, it, it, it's cool. Um, one of the dialogues and dynamics that Dane and I feel, and I, this is the message from day one that we've thought about on this show, man. I respect him for who he is. 
I say, hey, you know, it's cool for their disagreements. I respect all mindsets, faiths, creeds, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think there's any, I want it to be known that everyone is welcome. Whatever you stand for, that's great if you can be yourself. And he happened to be along that, the lines of his faith is very strong. Um, and it's yeah. fine if someone's not, I don't have anything against either. It's, it's just whoever you are, right? And there's just something about whatever you are, whatever your identity is, you, you're strongly um, you stand for that, right? So I just mm -hmm. and then the, you, genuineness. This is who I am. Maybe you're what, the the path what Kim follows, or maybe you celebrate a different creed, or maybe there's no creed at all that you follow. But this is who I am, right? This is the person that I am. I remember what we there's, did one with. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Yeah. So there's just not enough people that are that are preaching that message anymore. That like be who you are and, and buy into it 100. percent You know, and yeah, and go in there and, and break bread with somebody else who's some who's different. You know, who believes something yeah. different. You guys can coexist and. And yeah, that's how it needs to be more. Of. And that's, I love that. And that's been my biggest message from day one, him and Marcos from POD, some of my biggest influences, right? And Marcos talked about, I don't care what you believe or don't believe, we can still be friends and love each other and get mm -hmm. along. And that, I just, something about that has always inspired me that love don't cost anything. Uh, getting along doesn't cost anything. We don't have to agree on anything. Um, except that it's okay to be peaceful and love each other. I just, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And as you know, with your sports and with your teams, man, uh, that goes right on the field. You got to have those girls getting along, right? They got to yeah, love each absolutely. other. And, you know, um, you probably preach that all the time that we got to get along. We got to put our differences aside, even on the field with those kids, right? Yes, 100%. 100%. And especially those girls at that age. I mean, the cattiness starts and it's like, you know, you got to be in between these lines. You gotta, you're on the same team. You're a bunch of sisters out here, man. You got to yeah. get along at least for 71 mm. minutes. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Right. So um, again, busy, busy, man. I messaged him. I started working on getting him on a long time ago. And then I finally was like, I got a response from him. He's like, Hey, I got about 28 minutes on a Wednesday. Yes, sir. We'll make it happen. And that's just, you know, the life that he, he's living a life of helping others. And sometimes yeah. putting others first is very time consuming. Right. So mm -hmm. Ken, thank Absolutely. you on behalf of being just awesome. Saturn, if you guys haven't heard that song, go take a listen to it. Uh, it's actually a nineties one. It kind of reminds me almost of like, uh, that was that late nineties kind of 10,000 maniacs Atlantis kind of feel, but also rock at the same time. And then they mm -hmm. get into this like industrial, almost like power man 5000 stuff it's like whoa they do this this parallel of different types of music and that's what you guys see at skillet now on him if you listen to his solo stuff he's this can go from like the beatles to clapton to like Mudvayne. it's just all over the place you know mm -hmm. so um just an inspiring musician an inspiring person and just knows what he wants to be and it knows his path in life and has followed that very well so wow yeah, jesse sure. thank you that was a good one man i'm glad you got to be a part of that that was cool so hey like i say um, that band has meant a lot to me over the years so i appreciate the chance to get in here and do it i, I really do man that was awesome i love it well on behalf of uh of dane and jesse and josh um we'll close on that one can we got a few more tonight tonight's a big night after can later on tonight we've got one of our buddies from ku wide receiver number two Lawrence stopping by to hang out. And then we've got a DJ stopping by after 10. One of Pettity's uh, DJs that he works and does some uh, mixes with is uh, Jimmy Rock stopping by. So it's a great night of music, but we'll take a little breather. Don't forget, as always, that we love you. And as Dan would usually say, thank you for listening. <laughs>